Well, as Dr. Tarur has already explained to you that he has to chair a standing committee meeting. And Mr. Dua has also to go there, but I have requested him not to make move at the same time other people think they are boycotting our discussion. So, so Dua, sir, I will come to you. You were press advisor to Atal Bihari Bajpayee, and he is the person who first said India, U.S. natural allies. He is the one. I was with him in, in Washington, yeah. traveling with him in the talks. With you. Now, uh, somebody has written that Modi now appears determined to translate Bajpayee's <laughs> sentiment into durable partnership. Now, do you think there is some substance in this? There is another. Other end is that somebody written. To build up great expectation is good strategy. In the run-up to elections, it helps you get elected. But there is the evident downside. You have to live up to them. So far, the Modi government has done precious little to meet elevated expectations. So, Mr. Uh, the authority of the leadership at the moment is very, very important. Obama would like the visit to succeed in a big way. He wants to prove that he is not in your matter. The George is the bond elections to the House and the Senate. They will be given. He will want to prove he can still take some decisions in a very really important way. But what is the impulse is to give it to a plan. The impulse is after achieving results, substantial results in Australia and the world. He, he wants, uh, he wants uh, this visit to succeed in a big way. But my test is not the language they use. Relationships are always uh, what is an ally and what is a partner and partnership is a used word in Europe and, and, and the Western world in a different way than used uh, in earlier terms, and what, what becomes an ally, I don't think the word ally will be very popular with him, but partnership will be popular with him. The test will be how much technology America is going to, U.S. is going to share with us in sensitive areas, which, which has been a unstated, not stated openly too much. In many areas, they are, they, are, they are keeping their hands back and technology is being kept back. Investment certainly will come, I suppose. And they, they will utilize this 49% clause has not been amended for, for without any reason. These two tests, the defense partnership, whether whatever you call it, it's important for Modi to show results in that area, creation of jobs, if they're manufactured here. But technology is very, very important test is going to be of this summit. Whether the, I don't know how high it is on the agenda of the talks uh, between now and Jan, January 26th. Much is going to be discussed, the details. Thank you. Raji, I will come to you because the economy is what matters. Somebody written that, unlike many, Modi has understood the centrality of the United States in accelerating India's economic growth and elevating its position in the international system. Now, somebody also, Modi also said they will increase the trade by five times in a few years. Many people were very skeptical whether it happened. Then let's also get something concrete details. The difference of civil nuclear law, IPR, solar energy, compulsory licensing, mandatory sourcing, taxes, and all these things. Keeping all these back of mind, do you think economic reasons are really going to take a leap forward? I'm actually convinced that, and, and simply because I think uh, what Shashi Tharoor has been emphasizing, and which is that the, this government has taken the bull by the horn on our domestic front, which is that they have said, Mr. Modi has said that they will bring India 
within the first 50 ranks of doing business survey, where it is now languishing at 142. It has slipped from 136 to 142. Now, yes, fifth, I was talking to the Secretary Industries yesterday, and he was saying that it's, it's going to be very difficult to do this, to improve the business environment. But the fact is that those people are on the job now, and that's actually being done. So what I would actually... and so. And, and really speaking, 80%, if not more, of the problem of India's expanding trade or commercial or economic relations, etc., is at home. It's high time that India, sort of, you know, for a, for a while, for a long while, stop pointing the finger at others. Because, you know, our tariff rates are highest. Our protectionism, you know, is, is high. Our industry, the big boys especially, you know, still think that this 1.2 billion, you know, population market is theirs and it has to be protected for them. They're not convinced that, you know, we are living now in a, you know, globalized world where they have to be internationally competitive. So I think by the very fact of Mr. Modi admitting this, declaring it, and now getting it down, you know, to the brass tracks, and this is where I think uh, Shashi, would, Shashi would be better off in not judging in six months what the implementation is going to be. Because six months is too short a time. And I know there's a lot of work in progress. So I'm actually quite convinced that given this pragmatic, implementation-oriented, focused approach of this government, I, I, I am very hopeful that you will see results very soon. And therefore, some of these things that you're talking about, you know, will actually, you know, we, we sort of, you know, will, be, you know, will, will go away. Some, some uh, irritants will remain. And those returns will actually will have to be sorted out in a much more sort of, a, you know, how do I say, in a much more give and take manner. And here maybe the U.S. will have to be a bit more asymmetric in its approach towards India than a quid pro quo reciprocity, which may not work in some cases, like, for example, in the pharma. Thanks. Okay. Liability laws, which you are talking about, I think that's going to be amended and liability law is going to be less rigorous than it was provided. Incidentally, it was BJP, BJP which insisted on those clauses to be added, and Manmohan Singh was resisting it. Now they want Arun Jaitley was pressing those amendments in Parliament. Uh, I think they are going to revise it to make, make well, it more accommodative. Good, good news. Well, Gucharan, you were not able to finish some of the point you want to continue. And also, I would like to have your comment. This is an article written by one of very well-known writer, not natural partners at all, written by former foreign secretary. His last line says that U.S. is a hard nut to crack, and, and even if it could be, it, its contents are none too sweet. Ambassador <laughs> 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 Kamal Yeah, well, you he know. He was support, he was one of the panelists, but he overstayed in Germany, he couldn't be with us. Yeah, well, this, actually, this comment exactly, exactly underlines what Rajiv was saying about the toxicity of our diplomatic. Where is, uh, where is Lalit Man saying? Well, lucky that he's not hearing. Okay. That, that actually, our relationship with the U.S. would be a very good relationship if it was a relationship between people and businesses. It is the diplomats on both sides, beginning, beginning with the time of Krishna Menon and John Foster Dulles, who actually poisoned it. And we are still getting that poison out of our system. And so I'm sorry to say that, that what the last part of that comment, and, and, and it's not the hard nut, it's the it's the end part of that not contents are not too sweet. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, the I I, I fundamentally uh, agree with what. I, want add, I, I just want to add something to what uh, you know, Kuchar had just said about this. You know, you have to broaden this to not just diplomat but also really it's a matter of confrontational elites. The Indian elite believes that it is the best in the world. It is one percent of this population. That's true. It is the best in the world. It has the answer to all of the world's problems. You know, and, and it, you know, it can do global governance at yeah. all times. The fact is, and that is what leads to this confrontation all the time. Okay. So, what I just wanted to say here was that I, where I disagree with Shashi is that I think Shashi has forgotten, or perhaps he, because he's never had anything to do with business, there's something called an investment cycle. 
uh, there's something called an investment. You know, you're taking away from my five minutes. <laughs> there, there's the. Okay, so there is. Businessmen know that there is something called an investment cycle, and it investment begins with confidence. We have got the confidence, confidence on both sides, and it's not just the stock market in India that's reflecting in con in that confidence, but rating agencies, a number of other indicators that are coming in, investment banks, etc. And so, I think it begins with confidence. Second, confidence leads to investment. Now, the process of the last six months has been actually trying to undo so much of the damage that was done in terms of stopping projects. When you stop a project, the the investor, the clock is ticking with the bank, and so. You have to. That many cases, those investors have completely gone bankrupt in the meantime. So that's a very difficult process. And I know one person. I mean, somebody in this government who was working 24 hours a day, practically 18 hours a day at least. I know, uh, working to unblock, unblock, ungum the system. So there's been a lot of implementation, which has been been done. And certainly, once you have investment, then it takes time for the production to begin, for the jobs to come come back, and for the growth to pick up. So, frankly, this was actually an illegitimate question to even address. <laughs> and and so, I think that what we should address are really the implementation steps that are being taken. Now, so I think somebody mentioned the steps being taken by. In this in this Make of India project, to bring down those, bring down our our, our sort of index rating from 142 to 50, there's a huge amount of work that has been done. You know, there's a there's something the UPA government had the idea of self attestation, but it is this government. Self attestation is a revolutionary thing in India. It affects every single person in the country. And that pro that project is moving very rapidly. And finally, you know, just to talk about the fact. I mean, I totally agree that the balls in our court. That here, Manmohan Singh made this great uh, nuclear deal, but it was totally vitiated by the nuclear liability bill. And I'm, I won't just blame the BJP. BJP certainly deserves a lot of the blame. But I would deliver, blame all the parties who. Voted for this, and that's another toxicity that needs to be un unblocked. Thank you.